Hello, welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us today. Our guest in studio today is Mr. Greg O'Brien. Now, Greg has spoken across the country about his experience living with Alzheimer's disease. He's spoken at events, including the Alzheimer's Association, Massachusetts, New Hampshire chapter. That's right there in his community. He's also been featured in the documentary film Living with Alzheimer's, a place called Pluto. Greg's got more than 35 years experience as a writer, editor, investigative reporter, and a publisher. His latest book is called On Pluto, Inside the Mind of Alzheimer's. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Greg. Thank you. It's an honor to be with you. Thank you. Um, as uh, someone living with Alzheimer's, uh, talk about uh, the fact that you're, you know, you're not 85, you're not 90 years old, you're not even 70. You were diagnosed at the age of 59 back in 2009. Talk about uh, learning about your diagnosis. Yeah, the the, the first thing that I'd like to say, and I always say this, is that there's a stereotype of Alzheimer's, which is not accurate, and the doctors will tell you that. The experts, you're 85 years old, you're in a nursing home, and you're going to die, and aren't we all? Um, the mm -hmm. disease will take 20 to 25 years to run its course. It's like um, having a sliver of your brain shaved, uh, watching the grass grow, watching paint dry. And um, a lot of people can't see the grass grow and paint dry, but they look out and they and they see it after it's grown and dried, mm -hmm. and and that that's the painful journey of Alzheimer's. And the doctors also say that the pathology can start in your 40s, the uh, uh, coming together of plaques and tangles. Mm -hmm. So now that I said that, I just forgot your question, so I should stay focused here. Tell me your well, question again. Well, actually, um... and, and you know what? It's okay to laugh. You, you gotta. <laughs> Uh, the other day I put uh, my wife open the dishwasher, uh -huh. and uh, my business cards were in the dishwasher because uh -huh. my brain told me that they were dirty and I need to wash them. So, and you know, you got to... You got to have a sense laugh. of humor, yeah? If you don't, you, yeah. you know, if you don't have a sense of humor about struggles in life, whether it's Alzheimer's or uh, a death in the family, broken marriage, a disease, then uh, the enemy owns you. Absolutely. And uh, so you got to fight and fight back with humor. Well, my question uh, initially was, uh, I was wanting to, you to describe, you know, what was going through your mind when you were diagnosed with, with Alzheimer's? Um, any diagnosis of a major disease is a shock to the system, but, you're, you know, you're 59 and you're a publisher. It's your passion. What went through your mind? Well, um, I had a front row seat, and, and I think the family background is important here. Uh, my maternal uh, uh, grandfather died of Alzheimer's. My mother died of Alzheimer's. I was her caregiver on Cape Cod, family caregiver. My um, uh, paternal uncle died of Alzheimer's. My father, before he died, was diagnosed with dementia. So as a journalist, as an observer, I saw up close what this disease was about and started recognizing symptoms, horrific short-term memory, um, rage, seeing things that aren't there, not recognizing people in familiar places. Um, all of those uh, um, online symptoms that anyone can look up, mm -hmm. and they were getting worse and worse. And um, so when I finally, and then I had two serious head injuries that doctors said unmasked a disease in the making. And so when I finally got the diagnosis, um, I wasn't surprised. And there, there was a little, I know this sounds odd, a little relief in knowing the enemy that I was fighting. But it's, it's been an enemy of my family. And I had to pull myself uh, out of denial. And then you have to tell the people around you. My doctor said I couldn't own anything. I had to turn everything over to my wife. Um, and, and, and I'm okay with that, but it's like you're shedding. It, it, it's like a, uh, you know, it's like a, I, I think of myself sometimes as a, as a centipede and I drop another sneaker off the leg of the centipede or mm -hmm. drop another shoe. And, um, and then I needed to tell my clients, all the people I write for, all the people I consult with, so they knew. And then I needed to tell my kids. And I think that's what you're asking, right? If my well, yeah, about, about um, my children. After the the initial shock, did you come out of denial quicker than you know, say your wife or any of the other family members that were going to eventually yeah, be yeah, it, caregivers? It, yeah, it's the enemy within, and if you're going to fight an enemy. Um, you have to know the enemy and have to have strategies in place. And once it got to the level where I couldn't um, uh, function day to day, 
and anyone who's listening, I would. This is important advice, I think, from a layman like me. Um, I sought help, and um, you know, there's a difference between um, uh, not remembering where your car is and 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 not remembering that you have a car. A couple uh-huh. years ago, I, I took the trash to the dump in Brewster because we take our stuff to the dump. And I turned around and I said, geez, how do I get home? And, and, uh, I call my wife, I call my family, you know, son or something like that. Well, I drove a yellow Jeep and it was sitting right in front of me in the moment that, that my brain wouldn't tell me that that was my car. And so if people are having symptoms like this that, 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 um, impede their day to day life, they should go to an expert, not just a family doctor who, and they're wonderful. My best friend is a family doctor, but go to an expert and have a clinical test, and if the clinical test indicate that there are some serious injuries, I mean some some uh, some serious issues, then you go beyond that. But um, my book on Pluto Inside the Mind of Alzheimer's is about living with a demon of a disease, and because it takes 20 years to run its course, I think strategies are important to have in place to fight this disease. Now, when you're talking about some of these strategies, what type of strategies um, are we talking? Becoming uh knowledgeable or are we talking strategies you know right there in the house well, you know what what types of strategies can you tell family members when uh when it's time for us to deal with uh, this disease well first of all uh you should learn about the disease so so you understand it better um secondly um i as a journalist i, I might have a leg up because i write everything down and uh, you'll never see me without my macbook pro or, or my iphone I, 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 I take copious notes, um, of everything. Uh, I will email myself up to 40, 45 times a day because I'm afraid I'm going to forget some. I'm afraid I'm going to forget some, but it's a strategy that works for me. Um, the other strategies are, are, are being candid with people. So, so they know what your limitation is. And then, uh, also, and I'm just kind of hitting the high points here, mm-hmm. exercise. Geez, anyone who's listening, please get your exercise. I don't care if it's walking around your house in circles, but um, get exercise, exor- and then exercise your brain. And so I go to the gym late in the day. There's something called sundowning, and people can look that up. It's mm-hmm. when the light changes, and it causes more confusion in the brain. And then um, to, I do that to restart my brain, and, and, and then I go right for two hours or an hour. Mm-hmm. And uh, not that people have to go right, but... Do things to activate the brain. Stay involved socially. Talk to people. There's a great, I, I have this, uh, um, in, in, incredible, uh, um, urge now to withdraw, but I have to fight that every day because if you withdraw, you go deeper into the black hole yeah. of Alzheimer's. We talked about having a sense of humor. If without a sense of humor, then you say, as you say, the enemy has you. How can laughter, uh, in your opinion, be a very powerful, I guess, antidote to dementia, the, the pain, stress, maybe even a little bit of uh, uh, guilt sometimes? There's no telling what type of uh, mental stress that you are under on a daily basis, let alone your family members. Talk about the laughter that uh, has to be a part of your day in order to survive. Well, yeah, and, and when you laugh, again, I, I just cut up a frog in high school, so that's all the medical background I have, but, but I've researched this. And um, laughing releases certain chemicals inside your body that light you up. It's the same thing like when you go run. They talk, uh, uh, I don't know if it's endorf, whatever the word is, but uh, it, 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 it goes right to the brain and, and, uh, and sparks the brain. And, um, if you can't laugh at an enemy, the enemy owns you. And so I, you know, last name O'Brien, I, I have a, you know, very strong Irish humor. Mm-hmm. And, and you try to find the humor in something, but you stay focused on, on, on defeating it. And, um, you know, there, there, there are, you know, all sorts of stories that, that, uh, where you look at and, 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 and you're able to look back and laugh at it. And, um, I think we need to, to, to laugh at ourselves. In a way that that um, has respect for what we're doing, mm-hmm. but but just says, you know, hey, I'm going to roll through this. I hear you. Tell me why you wrote the book on Pluto inside the mind of Alzheimer's. Well, as I said before, you know, my paternal uh, grandfather, my mother, my paternal uncle and father all died of the disease. And as a journalist, um, once I was diagnosed, 
I said, shame on me if I don't start to chronicle the progression of this disease. And uh, was it an easy thing to do? No, I had a lot of help from a lot of people, some of them New York Times bestselling writers, chief among them Lisa Genova, who wrote uh, the book Still Alice, which I'm sure people know. And she also wrote the foreword to my book. But uh, I felt compelled because um, I, 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 in, in the moment I felt lost. I felt isolated. And um, I felt in writing this, it would connect me again and give me focus. And, uh, and it has because right. you have to fight against losing focus in this war. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, and we've been in studio with Mr. Greg O'Brien, writer, editor, investigative reporter, and publisher who was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's at the age of 59 back in 2009. And he's been here in studio today talking with us about uh, living with Alzheimer's, some of the struggles that family members have uh, in taking care of uh, Greg, and also about his experiences speaking across the country about living with Alzheimer's disease at events, including the Alzheimer's Association, Massachusetts, New Hampshire chapter. It's been great having you here with us today, Greg. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.